We'll continue our discussion of the book of Numbers with uh, the narratives. The narratives that tell the sad story of the failure of the first generation that left Egypt, the failure of that generation to reach the promised land. Book of Numbers is characterized by various rebellions and complaints in the wilderness. Two themes, the people were unfaithful, showing ingratitude and short-sightedness and unbelief, whereas God was faithful and continued to guide and protect them in the wilderness. You have in Numbers 11 complaints about the manna. God provided food for them, but the people were sick and tired of that manna, and they wanted meat. So God provided a miracle in which quail flew low, and they were able to knock them down and have so much meat to eat that it came out of their nostrils, it says. Though he sent a curse along with it, and the people uh, contracted a plague, perhaps from uh, the meat. In Numbers 12, Aaron and Miriam challenged Moses' leadership. This was the occasion of Moses' marry, marriage to a Cushite woman. And in an act that combines envy of Moses' leadership and perhaps racism against the Cushite, uh, Aaron, the brother of Moses, and Miriam, his sister, rebel against his authority on this occasion. Miriam was temporarily struck with leprosy as a punishment for her rebellion until Moses prays for her and she's healed. In number 16 you have the rebellion of Korah who again was jealous of uh, the role of the Levites and uh, Moses and Aaron's uh, role. And he proposed a test involving uh, bringing pans of incense uh, in fire pans before the Lord. And the Lord struck the followers of Korah dead uh, with fire and swallowed up uh, the followers of Korah in a sinkhole. Numbers 21, you have the story of the bronze serpent where the people spoke against God and Moses when they became uh, weary of the journey. So God sent uh, fiery serpents, but they were saved when uh, uh, he commanded Moses to uh, uh, make a bronze serpent, put it on a stick, and those who looked in faith on that were healed of their snake blights. Jesus compares his being lifted up on the cross to the serpent being lifted up uh, in the desert here, John 3, uh, 14. The key event, though, comes in Numbers 13 and 14, where, due to a lack of faith, they fail to enter the Promised Land. They send 12 spies to spy out the land from Kadesh, Kadesh down here in the uh, Sinai Peninsula, they send spies to spy out the land, and they find it's a good land, a land flowing with uh, milk and honey, which means that it was good for milk, good for cattle, and good for honey, meaning good for sweet things like grapes and dates, as well as uh, bee honey. But the problem was that there was a powerful enemy. The people who inhabit this country are very powerful. Their cities are fortified and large. And so the majority said that uh, though the land was good, the enemy was too powerful, and they wanted to return to Egypt. Whereas the minority, Caleb and Joshua, they silenced the people before Moses and said, we should go up and take possession of the land, for we can certainly do it. And Joshua the son of Nun, and uh, Caleb the son of Jephthune, who were among those who had explored the land, they tore their clothes and said to the entire assembly, assembly, 
<clears throat> the land that we pass through and explore it is an exceedingly good land, and if the Lord is pleased with us, he will lead us to that land, a land flowing with milk and honey, and will give it to us. Only do not rebel against the Lord, and do not be afraid of the people of the land, because we will swallow their, them up. They showed faith, Joshua and Caleb, looking not at a strong enemy, but at a strong God who could allow them to overcome strong enemies. But the people, sided with the majority, railed against Moses and his leadership and made plans to return to Egypt. At that point, God threatens them by appearing at the tabernacle and tells Moses that you know, stand aside and I will annihilate them, uh, the way he did after the golden calf story. The Lord said to Moses, How long will this people treat me with contempt? How long will they refuse to believe in me in spite of all the miraculous signs I performed among them? I will strike them down with a plague and destroy them. But I will make you, talking to Moses, into a nation greater and stronger than they. But Moses prays a prayer of intercession to prevent God's destruction of his people. And I uh, won't spend the time to read that prayer. Uh, but in response to that prayer, uh, God gives them a lesser punishment. He won't destroy them, but that generation, anyone 20 years old and up, would not enter the land of promise. Now, they, despite God's statement, some of the Israelites tried to enter the land anyway, but they were repelled by the Amalekites, and thus begins the 40 years of wilderness wanderings. So for 40 years they wander in the terrible Sinai Desert. I was there personally in 1983, and it does look as awful as you see in the picture here. And this leads to the story of how Moses and Aaron failed to enter the land themselves. At a place called Meribah, there is a lack of water leading to further complaints. Some wish that they had died with Korah or had stayed in Egypt. And God tells Moses then to produce water from a rock. Moses rebukes the people, strikes the rock twice, water gushes out, and you would think that the, this was a happy ending of the story, but no. God rebukes Moses and announces that Moses will not enter the land because of what he did. Which raises the question, what did he do that was so terrible? He says, because you did not trust me, enough to honor me as holy in the sight of the Israelites, you will not bring this community into the land I give them. You did not trust me. Apparently they showed unbelief. And the only place I see that is perhaps in the fact that they struck the rock. He struck the rock twice. Did he show unbelief that it was going to happen after the one strike that he hit it a second time. You did not honor me as holy in the sight of the Israelites. Moses and Aaron seemed to glorify themselves rather than God in this uh, incident. Must we bring you water from the rock? This emphasis on the first person pronoun, we, suggests they're glorifying themselves. In fact, only God could have done it. Psalm 106, uh, 32 and 33 says that Moses was provoked by the people and spoke harshly with his lips. He spoke imprudently. And then it says later on in verse 24, after this story, that Aaron would not enter the land I give the Israelites because both of you, Aaron and Moses, rebelled against the command, my command, at the waters of Meribah. Well, how is it that they rebelled against the, the, God's command? Well, God told them to assemble the congregation and address the rock. 
Instead, Moses addressed the people and struck the rock. Now, it seems like a minor difference. But their bad example, by not obeying God exactly, would encourage the people to be lax in their obedience to the commands of their God. So in summary, why were Moses and Aaron condemned at Meribah? They were condemned because of their unbelief. They were condemned because they glorified themselves rather than God. They were condemned because they disobeyed God's command. And that's a warning for us. Even leaders of God's people can disqualify themselves. Now a new generation starts moving towards the promised land, starting in Numbers 21. After 40 years, the Israelites uh, go towards Edom. Edom refuses to let them pass through their territory, so they have to go around the territory of Edom. Uh, they were told to do this because uh, Edom are the descendants of Esau, and Esau was the twin brother of Jacob. And thus, uh, the Edomites were kind of Israel's brother nation. And so they were not allowed to fight against Edom, but they were told instead to go around. They defeat the Transjordan kings of Sihon and Og. Uh, Sihon was the uh, uh, kingdom of uh, Ammon, was uh, under his control. He was king of the Ammonites. And Og was uh, farther uh, to the north, uh, king of uh, Bashan. And that brings us to the story of Balaam and Balak. But we will uh, deal with that in our next video.